going to start off from my previous presentation and previous session where I looked at um, how to deal with canonical literature in theater training, uh, to do a diverse approach to the traditional, uh, you know, authoritative approach. Uh, dead public comes alive. Um, before I explain these illustrations, um, this is a, a session here that I've uh, been working with. Uh, so it's, um, it's action based uh, research. I've been doing this for, for, for a few years. And what I present here today is mainly taken from uh, class held uh, in 2023. Um, for those who don't know Tennyson's Lady of Charlotte, I guess a very brief run through. Um, we're talking about, uh, we go back to 1832, uh, where Alfred Lord Tennyson wrote a poem about a lady, young lady, who is under a spell. She is uh, imprisoned uh, in a castle on a small island in the middle, in the middle of the river. Um, she cannot look at the world through a window, but she has to see it through a mirror. Okay? Um, long story short, Sir Lancelot, when his night comes along, he uh, attracts her attention. She looks out the window at him. Um, so she breaks the spell. She thus leaves the room and then she um, gets into a boat, floats down the river that. Okay, so that's the, the, the short. So this is this is a canonical literature that students say, why do they have to learn this? I mean, it's 1832, it's got nothing to do with us. So I said, yes, it does, because my colleagues uh, elsewhere have decided this is what we're going to have on the main list. Majority of rules. So fine, then we deal with um, it. So breaking out is not just the castle balls, but it's also the state of mind. Okay? So the image here uh, to your right uh, is uh, Norwegian, um, a representation of Norwegian uh, researcher Ada Ofsted, who uh, claims that uh, the individual lawyer is imprisoned at his or her desk. So how do we deal with the, the, the poem of 1832? Um, well, as a unit, I need to be a role model. I can't lecture. Because my students are not going to lecture. They're going out to, 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 to have work with creating young individuals. Um, passing on the established acceptance. We accept this is the way it is. This is the way Tennyson wants us to regard his poem. And it's simply a reproduction for the exam. Okay, the alternative approach uh, is based on piecing together a piece of puzzle to bring an understanding. It is about, based on, on your own present time, not the past of others. Past of others is not interesting. Not really. We are the ones who are living today. We need to deal with our world and convey that to the world on their risk and then put it on. And we need to be based on ways of production rather than reproduction. So the work is poem, it's a workshop. Uh, the work we've put it for, we have uh, three stages. We need to find or figure out the semantic understanding of what do the words mean? What what is tense and tell of it? Um, stage two is to create a lot of novel imagery of this. When I tell my students, if you can draw it, you can understand it. It's all about encoding and decoding. And then stage three is a closer study of the findings in stage two. And the end product is a multi level presentation. Not a reproduction exam, but our own creation. So here we start. Um, individual reading. There's no information. They're not even told that they're going to be given this program. It's not even on the reading list, officially. I don't tell my students. No. Um, the only information I give them is the author and the year. They are not allowed to Google and they're not allowed to use any dictionaries. And you need to work out, work this out together, the meaning through association. The words, we don't understand them, but can we associate with something? Are there any words that sound similar, that look similar? Is there, are there any words in the region that look similar? So that to piece this together, work together. Um, so they, they, they did a pretty well. This is a multimodal imagery. These are two very different um, 
illustrations. The one to the left is, is, is quite detailed. Uh, we see the uh, lady Charlotte uh, sitting there uh, on the mirror. She's got a, a web. Um, in uh, 1832, it would be a web uh, and a loom. Today, we would have the uh, internet as a World Wide Web. Uh, again, we don't see reality through the web, um, but it's just based on a, a number of, of images that we get. And then uh, on the other side, you see the, the, the fields of quality, you see farmers, uh, you see time and distance, and you see life around. The second uh, image uh, is a much simpler drawing. Uh, which is the Lady of Shalott uh, in the boat, floating down uh, through the river of life slash death towards the final destiny. Um, so, when it, so the, the, the problem is just four parts, so there are four drawings for each group. Um, working at this, so then we look at what do you associate with this? How do you know, how trigger your your, 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 your own world, and we work with the stream of consciousness. Uh, to be, uh, tell us things. When you sort of lay in the sun, uh, you're dozing, you're sort of half asleep, and, and the sun is like saying, hey, why do I stop thinking about this? Where did this thought come from? And try to work way backwards. Okay. So now we're going to go forwards. Uh, one idea is it's another. And music, I always like to bring music into my teaching. Um, we speak in the river. Is one of the everybody gets that yeah river fields of gold still islands in the stream <laughs> very very different very different very different um the last one is very upbeat uh was the uh, the uh, the uh, the river of Bruce Springsteen is more melancholy that suits the poet uh, but also other songs like the rivers of Barbados. And also uh, the caves, the, the wild roads. The first ones are based on this river in the well, I mean, the fields of gold, it's, it's, it refers to the fields uh, that I described. The first, they are, they are, the titles are semantic, uh, the, you recognize the words, but the wild roads in the cave, that is the recognition of imagery of the music video of um, Eliza Day being drowned in water. And the sadness there, so there's a bit of destiny of death. Um, and then also, film and television. Is anything film and television that might trigger uh, your, your associations there? And yes, the River Wild is one. Um, I got I got a piece of death in the night. There's one association there. And uh, what is the uh, Hades? Yeah, the sticks, River of Death. Uh, etc. And also uh, the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy, a television a children's TV series, uh, which got the Grim Reaper in. And of course, the, the Grim Reaper comes in because um, the word reap is is found in the problem. The farmers are reaping the fields. Um, so these are sort of bringing in the world, nothing to do with tennis at all, but it certainly has to do with the world of the moment. Um, take a closer study of the findings. I mean, you work in groups, and as a teacher, I, I just you know, I go around and talk to the groups. If they're stuck somewhere, I can give them a little bit of so you know, I would associate with this, and that kind of like releases a flow of consciousness for the, for the others. Oh, yeah, okay, perfect. So that way, oh, we can do that. And then I uh, can give a, 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 a good adaptive learning as we go along. There's some um, groups might you know, get into, say, Nick Cave or you know, like a nerd about it, and just start talking about nerd about it. Other groups are talking about other things. I mean, you know, I can adjust, I can adapt, not adapting as far as the level, you know, uh, fast nerd or slow nerd, but adapting to uh, to um, to interests where they are in the process. Uh, for example, we work with the mirror. So, well, how do you search in the mirror? Well, it's Snow White. Mirror on the wall. Um, the mirror comes from side to side because it's misty. They're looking into the crime of misty writing. And there's a discussion like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to misty. So, Jose, I got you. And then they can say, so I've come from the mirror, and they're like, oh, you're going to be a guy. Have you seen Pablo? Uh, she says, oh, yeah, I've seen Pablo. Okay. You can find the same wall. And they go, you know, you, you get into discussion. Um, <clears throat> 
stream of consciousness getting in away from the from the island and the river, but still uh, the students are very active because they all have something to contribute to that. You don't have to understand Tennyson, you don't have to understand how my professor told me how to uh, analyze whatever. Uh, Harry Potter's mirror fragments. There is more Harry Potter. And he uses the mirror fragment to communicate with Dumbledore's brother. Uh, bad luck. Mirror cracks. Bad luck. And again, superstition. Talk about superstition. And mirror is also not reality. It's just you know, uh, a distorted image. And uh, distortion, you know, and then it's fun fair. Zero mirrors are different shapes, but they're get all distorted. So this is uh, you're working with the term mirror. Uh, if you want to work with the concept of field, this one example here, uh, fields of gold, that's been mentioned. How, what other associations do the students get? Anfield, football field, field goal. And then they, they got into discussion of the difference between um, football or soccer, uh, as Americans say, and American football. What's the difference? Uh, what are the advantages, disadvantages, as a spectator? So they're getting into this discussion of the sports. Um, so what's Sally's field? We're going to Forest Gump, and we're going to get into more issues about uh, the uh, actors of Nick Luman. What does what Nick Luman have in common with Sally's field? Quite a tragic role, so there was a, hmm. uh, yeah. And so getting into, into this, so I mean, even if you don't know much about Tennyson, you know a lot of Forrest Gump. So you, everybody has something to contribute. And again, it's into farming. Okay, the farmers described. We get into beer. Why do we get into beer? Well, beer uh, was one of the reasons why uh, we went from from the hunter gather gathering um, a, a, a type of, of lifestyle into more permanent farming. Okay. Um, and showing the sheep, getting into the children's uh, television, and posting Pat. It's like you know, oh yeah, and then they, and they, they bring in their recollections of of you know these these TV series and beer drinking and beer popping, brewing, and so you know there's, there's a lot of um, information going back and forth within the book. So this is the way that you know, they really get to grip with, with the term field. What does field mean? And I'm asking to keep track of the time, but I'm totally lost. I'm not enjoying myself. <laughs> I'm having a good time. Um, that how do we get from Tennyson to red wine? Now this is this is this is and this is authentic from from uh, 2023. Well, it starts with fields of gold. Um, and the fields of gold, we go over to. How do we get there? One of the guys interested in sport is, ah, the field, the song Field at and Rye is used as a national anthem for Irish rugby players. And then you know, he showed us the uh, video of the Field at and Rye, and saw, and saw supporters going, and going nuts at the uh, Olympic Championship, uh, etc. And it's okay, let's go to the Field of Latin Rye. So we go to the map. We find uh, at Rye, and then we see, well, it is 1970s song uh, written in, in the style of, of, uh, of folk ballad. And it is about um, it, it is about the hardships during the, the uh, potato famine in Ireland and the late hundreds. Um, and there's another version too, Tropic Murphy's. Um, uh, Boston based uh, sort of mix between punk and traditional Irish music. So they have their version and then they would play that. Uh, what do they have in common? Well, the problem with see, the protagonist of the Fields of Adam Ryan, like he stole some of the farmer's um, uh, grain to feed his young child. And he was rewarded by being sent off to Australia. And where did he end up? In Botany Bay. And this is a decent red wine. Uh, doesn't compare Italian wine, but it's, it's a decent Australian wine. 
So here we are, tennis to, to red wine. So this is the way the mind of a student works. And then we bring in, right? Who's the next thing? So, hey, the river. And then we look at the text. It says, yes, what is Bruce Winston, the river having, having, having common with, with, the, with, with the lady of Shabbat? There's a book in prison that um, the protagonist in the river is, is, is a cultural prisoner. Um, he, he grew up, he, you know, from, from, uh, we grew up like our father's down, etc. So, um, so they're getting back to music, looking at the, the context here. Um, from King Harry to Harry, the King Arthur, Harry Potter. Um, Camelot is mentioned. Um, King Arthur. Like the Grand Table, this is the screen consciousness, and the, uh, the Sword and Stone, this is the version. And then there's a big Excalibur. The old from Excalibur, and here is the, the Lady of the Lake uh, giving um, uh, giving the knights um, the, the sword, and, and the lake free, freezes over. Isn't this exactly what happens uh, when Harry Potter finds the sword of Gryffindor? He finds it, and then the, the, the pond freezes over. Uh, and again, uh, ties in with the, with the mirror as well, so bring it back back to, to the mirror concept. Um, so. Are we to be held to ransom, or do we see this as an escape of the mind? Traditional analysis, held to ransom, we are going to provide an exam. The alternative approach here is to create, uh, create something uh, with assessment as learning, and here again, reference to rules of summary learning. We want to be at the top to create, which we do uh, alternatively, not at the bottom, bottom by reproduce exam. Uh, so there is no key, what is the best way, but give it some thoughts. Which way would you like to work with your students? Um, and significance of the title. Uh, it's a Victorian poem, something old, something new. Today's life outside the classroom brought into traditional classroom. Uh, something borrowed, stream of consciousness based on input from the others in the group. So one idea leads to another, to a borrow. And something blue, uh, blue represents serenity, stability, inspiration, or wisdom. <laughs> that was so creative, wasn't it? I mean, just the concepts 